So uh, welcome everyone to uh, the EDM Council Data Vision and our keynote panel discussion. Uh, really exciting and frankly, to some degree, unprecedented that we have AWS, Microsoft, Google, and IBM ready to talk about their involvement and collaboration with CDMC, which is the Cloud Data Management Capability Framework. But to get us going, I'd like to uh, make a special introduction to one of the original inspirations and founders behind CDMC, Ali Beige with LSAG, or the London Stock Exchange Group. Ali's a distinguished engineer, head of architecture, data, and analytics, and also has a very special responsibility in support of the council in this activity, the CDMC co-chair. So Ali, I'm gonna turn my screen off, allow you to go ahead and be able to share on your side. Why don't you give an, this audience an update as to what is CDMC, and then we'll move right into the panel. Thanks, Mike, um, and, uh, and thanks for having me uh, today. Um, as you say, I'm head of architecture for the data and analytics division at the London Stock Exchange Group, LSEG. Um, but I'd like to talk to you today about my role in the Cloud Data Management Capabilities Working Group that I helped to found and currently co-chair. The CDMC initiative started in 2020 while I was a distinguished engineer uh, in the Center of Excellence for Data at Morgan Stanley, a global and systemically important bank. I spent several years working with developers moving sensitive data workloads onto cloud, but we found cloud providers didn't have a mature control framework available that teams could use off the shelf. So we'd written some guidelines that encapsulated the data governance, data technology, and data management policies that Morgan Stanley was operating under, and we turned those policies into a checklist that developers could use as they delivered their cloud projects. We approached the cloud providers and asked them to automate these controls in the same way that we had them automated for our on-premise data. And they said they could do that, of course. We were a big customer. But it would be slow if one customer asked for all of the 14 controls to be implemented. We thought that perhaps if we could get the industry together to ask with one voice at the same time for the same 14 features, things could move a bit faster. Google, Calibra, Capco, Elseg, and Morgan Stanley all approached the EDM Council together to help create a working group to take those 14 principles from Morgan Stanley and share them with the industry to see if other systemically important banks had the same problem. We, we created a group that now has over 100 companies contributing to the CDFC initiative. Uh, it's more than half of the world's systemically important banks, including Barclays, Citi, Credit Suisse, Deutsche, DTCC, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, JP Morgan, Elseg, M&G, Morgan Stanley, Societe Generale, Standard Bank, Sterling National Bank, TD Bank and UBS. So quite a few subject matter experts on what financial services need and privacy regulations as well. And we also had the largest cloud service providers, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, Microsoft Azure. And we included more specialist firms who have deep experience in providing some of these controls. Controls. Uh, they include technology companies like Big ID, Calibra, Data.World, Informatica, uh, Privitar, Solidatus, and Snowflake, and also consultancies and system integrator uh, partners, including Accenture, Capco, KPMG, and Orteca. We've been working together since May 2020 to come up with this control framework, and we're also engaging with financial services regulators to share what we've done and deep dive with many of them on how this will de-risk public cloud use for the industry. The framework was published in September 2021 and is now available as a free download from the EDM Council. It covers six main areas. Governance and accountability, data cataloging and classification, accessibility and usage of data, protection and privacy, data lifecycle management, and data and technology architecture, including commercial best practices with data. The CDMC group is now working with multiple cloud providers and other technology platform companies to automate these controls and provide them as always on capabilities across all cloud services. Many of these features are already available and can now be certified against the CDMC standard by a growing number of CDMC authorized partners. Enterprises are also able to assess their own internal data capabilities against the CDMC maturity scale and see how they measure up to the best practices of the financial services industry. If you're interested in joining the CDMC group or if you're a technology provider who's interested in getting your products certified against the controls and therefore making it easier for financial services firms 
and much more broadly across other industries with sensitive data to use your infrastructure, do get in touch with the EDM Council. So where do we go next? The CDMZ executive sponsors have prioritized the governance and protection of sensitive data for the last 18 months, and I'm laser focused on producing working software that implements those controls, but there has been interest in taking new, in adding new offensive data capabilities into CDMC around analytics, for example. We've also had interest from multiple other industries in reusing this standard. I wanted to say before I close, a quick thank you, and in fact, a huge thank you to the 300 SMEs and executives from all the organizations that have contributed to the creation of CDMC. In particular, thank you to Morgan Stanley, to Capco's data practice, to our team at the EDM Council, and to my colleagues at LSEG. And I'll leave you with this. If you're considering how best to move your most sensitive data into cloud, we hope you find the new CDMC framework helps you to keep it safe. Now back to Mike for our panel discussion. Thank you very much. And a big thank you to you. Uh, every initiative needs someone to step up and say, let's do it. Uh, and I think uh, that distinction goes to you and along with uh, Richard Paris. So we're really, really grateful for uh, your support. And thank you for helping us kick off uh, this fabulous panel. Let me go about the business and introduce uh, the group overall. I just want to do a screen check, and, or let me see if I can do that going. And here we go. Let's share the screen. And I'll just do, uh, hopefully, uh, my screen is now showing up for everyone. Awesome. Good. So let's have some fun. Let me go ahead and introduce uh, our panelists for today, starting first with Mike Flasco, who is the general manager with Microsoft. So Mike, welcome to uh, the event, and uh, thank you for being a panelist. Great to have you. The next I'd like to uh, introduce is Jennifer Coe. Jennifer is a principal in the FSI cloud governance portion out of AWS. So Jennifer, welcome to the panel. Great to have you as well. And then from Google, we have Mose Tronke, who is in financial services, industry solutions architects. So Mose, great to have you in the panel as well. And of course, uh, no panel would be complete without IBM being part of it. So uh, Tony, great to have you on as well. Tony Giordano, the senior partner and vice president with IBM. So welcome to you, Tony, and welcome to all four of our panelists. So let's get going. Uh, first question, why CDMC and why collaborate with other companies, including arch competitors that are here on this panel with you, along with other industry players? And we're going to do the first question across all four panelists. And to show that there's no partiality, we will do this in alphabetic company order first. And we'll switch that for the last question as well. So starting off, uh, Jen, since there's an A in AWS, why don't you give us your take on why CDMC and why collaborate? Yeah, great. Happy to uh, to lead this off. So I think I'll echo what Ollie just highlighted of with the uh, systemically important financial institutions all at the table with the technology leadership and expertise coming together and, and sharing all of the ideas. Uh, 300 participants every single week for hours at a time, really wrestling through the uh, technological capabilities, the requirements across that entire set of controls. Um, so it's our opportunity to all come together and bring the entire industry forward. Um, it was a, a great 18 months of, of effort. It's really nice seeing it all come together um, and everybody working side by side without any thought of, hmm, you know, we might be competing in the marketplace. So the, the collaboration has been excellent um, and definitely worth it to drive the entire industry forward. Great, thank you, Jen. Uh, Mose, over to you at Google. What's your take? Why CDMC and why collaborate? Absolutely, thank you, Mike, and uh, it's great to be here. So to your question, why CDMC? I think it's really because the industry needs clear guidance on how to get to the cloud fast and safely and why collaborate with other companies uh, I really echo what has been said. It's really because we need the contribution from all the players to cohesively advance the industry best practices. Now, let me unpack those two things. So in terms of why CDMC, I think we've really seen that cloud acceleration has skyrocketed as companies of all sizes and industries become more reliant on data to drive transformation. And we think that the speed at which businesses are able to respond to change is really the difference between those that successfully navigate the future and those that are going to be left behind. 
And the CDMC framework is going to be a tremendous resource for companies as they continue to accelerate their digital transformation and reimagine their business. And I think the collaboration really, I echo what has been said, the, the high degree of expertise which we've seen in the working group has been absolutely incredible. And I think these kind of initiatives, uh, you, you can't really um, create uh, this kind of knowledge uh, and best industry practices uh, without a table like the one that you created at the EDMC. So including the perspective of all the actors has been absolutely key. Awesome, thank you, uh, Mose. Uh, over to Tony at IBM. Tony, what's your take? So when you think about competition, we, we, you know, we compete to work with our clients. And once we get in our clients, we have a vested interest to work together. And, you know, IBM is all about the hybrid cloud right now. We, we, we see data as something that will be on one to many clouds going forward or on prem or on edge. How do we manage all this? What, what what this framework provides is a way for us to all work together for our client's best interest in the, the broader ecosystem of data. You know, there's a term called data fabric. Well, what does that mean? That means we're going to be working across multiple environments. This framework gives us a way to ensure standardization and a way to benchmark against that standardization. So we see this as a great way to work with our, with our partners, such as Google, AWS, and, and, and Microsoft, as well as with our clients, with a standard approach around data management. Good, and uh, thank you, uh, Tony. Over to Mike at Microsoft. Hey, thanks, Mike, and uh, you know, congrats again to, to all my uh, collaborators on the on the DMC release. Um, you know, Microsoft, we, we're really focused on empowering uh, all organizations to maximize the value uh, of their data. And so we figured what better way than to collaborate with a group of industry experts, you know, across industries and, and really solve some of the toughest challenges with how to maximize the use of data. And so uh, we've really been excited by the amount of collaboration, the depth of collaboration, and really tackling some of the you know, some of the top questions that we've noticed, uh, you know, we've had through Microsoft's own journey and, uh, you know, and the, that of our customers have had. So um, we felt like, you know, what a better way uh, to enable data use than uh, collaborating across all of these uh, industry experts. Good. Thank you, Mike. And uh, my, my takeaway, um, having listened and participated, is that this really was a chance to listen to industry requirements. Uh, and that serves all the companies involved in this process. And then this is a capability model, which is what to do. It gives the freedom of each company to figure out their ingenuity, their innovation on how to do it. And so this wasn't a feature list uh, per se that you each had to do. This gives you the ability to hear what are the key requirements and then engineer the solutions in a way that represents what the industry needs instead of one company at a time. So that's, I think, awesome. And thank you for all working together on this. So I'm gonna to go to the next question, which is what are the key cloud challenges companies face that CDMC can help with? So if we get into the chair now of the ultimate user of CDMC, which might be that in financial institution or manufacturer or life science company, what are the challenges you're seeing on the front line that now you can say, hey, take a look at CDMC, this might help out. And Jen, do you wanna kick that off? Sure, sure. I would say that there are two that I see. Internally, when I work with our customers, I see that the organizations are still very siloed. And often the chief data officers don't always speak with the data architects, may not understand all the privacy considerations and then the, the regulatory implications. So I think one thing that the CDMC really helps with and what I like the focus is it brings the framework brings all of those considerations uh, into play so that it's tearing those silos down um, to make sure that all of the considerations to both protect the data, respond to the, the risk elements, as well as then, um, you know, make sure there's protection and satisfying for the um, the regulatory requirements is all uh, taken into consideration. I think the other uh, piece that helps from an external perspective is, and John mentioned it in his introduction, the industry is changing very, very quickly. And yeah. I think the framework allows that kind of refocus on 
you know, almost back to principles of focus on your protection, focus on the key elements so that you don't get overwhelmed by how quickly the industry is changing. So it allows that um, very actionable uh, pieces while everything is changing so quickly. Awesome. Uh, Jen, thank you. Uh, Tony, uh, what's yeah. your take on some of the challenges you see companies facing that maybe CDMC can assist with? Well, if you think about where data is going, and I want to build on something Jen just brought up. The use of data has changed so much in the last five years. And, and you know, the unfortunate pandemic has, has accelerated that. And it's about digital transformation. Data is being used more and more in flood. And the use cases are different. So we're, it's not just around business intelligence anymore. It's also around data science, but it's not just those two. It's BI, it's data science, it's digital, it's operational data. So you have all these different use cases, but you want to have a consistent set of patterns on how to engineer it, how to protect it, because you have multiple stakeholders now rather than just a couple of many. How do you create a framework to ensure the security of the data the, the use of the data, the data quality, this framework provides all those different capabilities. And I think it's needed more than ever than we've ever had in, a, in, in the traditional on-prem, on-one environment. But as we go to a cloud environment, as we go to a multi-cloud environment, people need to think about not just a standard approach, what they use for warehousing, but what do they need for a data platform that's going to have multiple use cases. And, and this, this cloud framework provides that standardization across those different use cases. Hey, Tony, uh, that's a, a really important point for our audience, uh, which is when this was being built, we started with an assumption that companies would be involved in not just a single cloud, but in many instances, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, uh, which means that the framework you have to accommodate that real world of all these different configurations as people go up their ramp up curve, et cetera. So uh, as an example, I think one of the actual uh, capabilities is the ability for catalogs to share metadata so that you can see the entire picture of your data assets across all different platforms. And that's one of the things that uh, companies will be able to find by using this framework is that it will speak to those requirements that help you in a multi-cloud or hybrid cloud environment. So that's great. Um, I guess on to uh, that next sort of shift in the questions here, which is what are the key, uh, you know, what, what can the CDMC framework offer to you, the cloud providers in accelerating cloud adoption? And Mike, I'm going to let you uh, take the first uh, stab at that question. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, I think, you know, in our experience in working with a set of organizations and, and building on what was just discussed, you know, the, the range of use cases that uh, organizations are trying to uh, make use and drive data into, uh, you know, is evolving quickly. But what we're finding is conversations are starting with, you know, some of the basics, some of the, you know, how do I get my data to the cloud? How do I make it discoverable? How do I ensure it's protected? Really balancing both the offense and the defensive sides. and we're finding a lot of time is being spent by organizations in that research, understanding the practices, understanding how to move forward. And, uh, you know, our hope is that through this collaboration with the CDMC, you know, there, there's really now a framework that, that's readily available. It's collaborated on by, you know, experts from, from multiple industries. And, you know, this can really provide and accelerate in those phases uh, of projects to, you know, give folks kind of a roadmap on how to think about moving their data, making it discoverable, protecting it. Um, and as Jen mentioned, you know, doing that as the data landscape is evolving and really providing a, a, a consistent framework uh, as, as a set of guideposts. Uh, so we're excited to see all the ways that it gets used uh, by organizations. Awesome, thank you, Mike. And uh, Mose, do you wanna add to uh, this perspective of what value does the CDMC framework offer to you as the cloud solution provider or service provider? Absolutely, absolutely, Mike. I think it's really about uh, three points. So one point uh, is about guidance, uh, which is representative uh, of the requirements of, of the whole industry. As you were saying just a few minutes ago, this is very valuable for cloud providers, right? We, we, we can't get that richness uh, of requirements and uh, information anywhere. Obviously, we can talk to our, to our customers, uh, but this kind of forum, which includes uh, such a large representation uh, of industry, um, 
companies uh, of uh, technology providers and cloud providers uh, is something which is really unique and, and can really be recreated uh, elsewhere. I think a couple of other points uh, which I think are very valuable to us and I think are valuable to cloud providers are the automated controls and the certification point. So really regarding the automated controls, uh, this is a way which allows to codify the best practices uh, and we in Google, we, we really believe in the value of automation and we think this is really one of the key differentiating factor of CDMC as opposed to the frameworks which exist elsewhere. It's really that ability to codify the best practices, uh, which leads me to the, to the third point, uh, which is around uh, uh, the certification and assessment. Uh, I think that is obviously important uh, to our customers uh, to understand their level of maturity, meaning that is also very important to us to uh, understand how we can best help our customers uh, to progress on that level of maturity and eventually accelerate their digital transformation. Awesome. You know, in this instance, this is a great question. So I'm going to move over to Jen and also Tony just to add to it. How CDMC helping AWS, uh, Jen, just as you move forward with your roadmaps and how is this helping the organization? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll echo um, uh, what we heard from, from my colleagues. Um, it's it's bringing the conversations to the fore. And exactly, I like how Mike highlighted of, even though the advanced capabilities are there, a lot of the conversations really kind of stop with, am I sure my data is protected adequately? So we're almost kind of at that step one. So raising and very upfront with the full set of controls, how each are addressed, they're all equally important. So it's really kind of making those conversations so they're not an afterthought um, and providing the framework that we can very methodically work with our customers to uh, proactively help them understand. So that overall um, awareness uh, increase has been hugely valuable. Yeah, almost I'm hearing you say that it's like pointing to a basic fundamental playbook by just having it there. It doesn't have to be terribly magical. It's the core fundamentals. It just makes the discussions move quicker. And if companies can see, hey, these 14 things are running and they're always on, that can give us confidence that we're now properly exactly and completely right. tracking our, our sensitive data. So that I think that's a really good point, Jen. Mm -hmm. Tony, over to you at IBM. Uh, CDMC, how do you see this helping uh, your organization as you serve uh, your ultimate customers? Well, it, one of the primary things we see it providing is a level of assurance to our clients. Here's an industry standard of things you need to consider as you move in your cloud migration. Going from one environment to another is a scary proposition. And, you know, it, IT professionals who've worked on-prem for years are looking at the cloud very differently and they're, they're not sure where to start and, and what the risks are. This is a quality assurance mechanism. This, this framework provides a series of, of practices and best practices that have been proven out in the field that they can go through and say, you know what, we're actually doing this pretty well. Or, we need to think about this some more. So for us, it's a risk mitigant, it's quality assurance, it helps clients build the confidence in these migrations as they move to the cloud. Awesome, thank you. Uh, I thought this was a good question to ask all four of you. So on to the next discussion, which is this idea, some could say it's a little bit nefarious, this idea of trust. Uh, so as you think about the CDMC framework, how is this helping bring trust into the marketplace and into the companies, the regulators, uh, all of the participants? And how does CDMC essentially help with this idea of bringing in and helping to accelerate trusted adoption of cloud services? So for this one, um, Tony, if I could go back to you to kick off with the answer and uh, we'll go through uh, the others as well on this particular really important question of trust. So let's build on what I was just talking about a minute or two ago around you know providing a common framework. If you think about regulatory compliance, and I'm, you know, I grew up in banking, so I'm gonna use a great bank example, BCB 239, and we're talking about data management, data lineage, you know, Sarbanes Oxley's big on data lineage. CDMC provides a common framework that actually aligns very tightly with the regulatory compliance around data governance. So if we use CDMC and we implement the best practices, we are actually 
meeting the requirements of BCP 239. And we can work with auditors and say, what did you use with the client to meet your qualifications? Well, here's a technical implementation. I used Cloud A's metadata management strategy and cataloging tool, or, or Cloud B's, or Cloud C's, or IBM's, or whomever's. But I'm using a standard approach that is well documented. I've implemented it. It matches one to one with your regulatory compliance, and it's going to help reduce the cost of regulatory compliance. Awesome, Mike. What I'm hearing you tie into is that this framework was built by hundreds of people. And they had an eye at things like GDPR, CCPA, which all companies face, not just the financial industry. And when exactly. these controls were being engineered and then the broader wraparound governance and operational guidance, which is the 160 pages of the full framework, this was the focus uh, to assure that people were doing things in a, uh, a trusted way. So Jen, you were in the middle of these uh, meetings. Uh, What's your take on this idea of trust and this framework called CDMC? Yeah, so I'll highlight two things. So um, one thing I really like about the structure of the framework itself, it not only lays out the controls, it lays out why it is important, the benefit that uh, the companies will receive by implementing them, and then getting down into the, and here's how you prove it. Um, so really taking that methodical approach to, you know, get everybody on the same page on why are we doing something, maybe help translate, and, and Tony mentioned this, of a lot of that, you know, a lot of history of on-premises controls, let's help people understand how I achieve that in the cloud. But then also the, um, the certification uh, options. So not only are we laying out these controls, why they're important, how to do them, but then the certification to say, and here's how you evidence that those are in place and operating effectively. So just being very upfront with that will help to raise awareness, which in turn will translate into uh, increasing that trust. Jen, uh, let me uh, sort of highlight something you've just raised. It's very important for the audience, uh, which is, the framework has been designed for an in-company to use, as well as a technology firm to use. The in-company has an opportunity with the way the framework is laid out, as you described, to have a clear description of each of the capabilities and sub-capabilities, and it's an auditable framework. It allows you to actually examine with artifacts for things that should be automated, the test procedures that you should run to validate it. You can do this on your own, or you can also bring in third party partners for CDMC to do independent assessments and certifications. And we're designing this and releasing it very similar to the idea of let's do a SOC 2 audit or let's do an ISO audit for cloud. But this is now looking at that life cycle of data controls that need to be implemented and then the wraparound governance and procedures. And this framework has been designed actually to assist with that and is a free license to all industry. There's actually no cost to download it and use it internally, which is really exciting. So Mike, um, this topic of trust, sometimes it's hard to pin down what that does. Uh, you have regulators involved. What, what's your take on CDMC as, you know, it, and uh, the idea of trust? Yeah, um, I'd like to build on something, you know, both Tony and Jen were bringing up, which is, uh, you know, when working with organizations, they, they wanna know that you know the approaches they're taking the methodologies they're following allows them to evolve their data use over time right it might start from one place but then there's another need that pops up in the organization and so i think just having the diversity of input that's come into the cdmc from all the angles you know that tony and others are bringing up i think helps build trust in the completeness of the framework the robustness and comprehensiveness of the framework um, and ultimately you know turns into trust i think by by its users in that it, you know, following these approaches allows you to be really agile uh, with uh, with data and know that you've you know got kind of the offensive side uh, covered as well as the defensive side. So we found that uh, providing a framework like this really helps you know people trust that they've, they've got a robust approach. And Mike, uh, thanks for raising up uh, something that I think the, very important for the audience, which is you mentioned the defensive versus the offensive side of leveraging cloud. And there was a conscious decision in the early days of the CDMC work group to actually say, let's make sure we get the fundamental protections and controls and governance in place as sort of the first major portion of this release that came out this September, and also then create the bridge to, 
further enhancements in the framework going into early next year around the offensive side of if we have our controls in place and we're not going to take risk, now we can do some really cool things. And that'll be some of the new additions along with other cross-industry requirements. So this framework will be going through a continuous evolution, similar to DCAM in the marketplace, where each quarter, each half year, we'll be revisiting and adding to it and evolving it to reflect the latest state of the cloud capabilities around uh, data. So Mike, thank you for raising that. So Mose, uh, this wouldn't be complete without your take as well at Google Trust. We have regulators, we have banks, we have uh, manufacturing firms, all different firms, and they're all seeking to accelerate cloud, but they want to do it in a trusted way. What's your take on this? Absolutely, I think you, you, the way you, you, you pose the question uh, really highlights uh, how complex this environment is, right? So you have the banks uh, or other companies, other industries, the technology providers, uh, the cloud providers, the regulator, and I think it's that all these player, players uh, need to trust each other, right? And I think what the CDMC provides uh, is a way for these players to, first of all, talk about uh, things in the same way, in the same language, uh, standardizing how you are talking about security or data quality or multi cloud, uh, but also standardizing the best practices uh, around these things. So I think about it as the, you know, the ultimate Rosetta Stone uh, in, the, in the area of, uh, of cloud data management. Uh, and it is incredibly, incredibly important, I think, thinking about some of the things we were hearing before around the uh, regulator. We think, um, for example, in the area of multi-cloud, uh, CDMC can actually be a very important tool to strengthen the resilience of the overall system, right? Which is a very important thing to regulators. Uh, thinking about uh, some of the, of the things around uh, regulatory reporting uh, and uh, uh, regulatory reporting requirements. Uh, again, uh, the cloud data management capabilities are very aligned uh, to the strong controls you need around data cataloging and the quality and lineage. Uh, and really they're bringing to life uh, how you can implement those things uh, in the real world is very important to bring trust to the cloud. Mose, thank you. And uh, one thing to also share, you, you raised this key idea of by having regulators see a common playbook, it solves one of the biggest hurdles that companies are facing, especially tier twos, large tier ones that operate multi-jurisdictionally. Each country, each region has its own approach to data privacy laws, uh, data sovereignty requirements, and one of the benefits and what the council has been systematically doing is briefing all the global regulators in follow-up sessions so that they can see this framework and create a common language and a common way of viewing how they should perform supervisory functions. So we've had sessions with like the Federal Reserve, the SEC in the US, the Bank of England, the ICO in England, discussions uh, at all different stages with the ECB, with ESMA and regulators throughout the world. And a lot of what they're saying is this is great because we're trying to figure out exactly how do we supervise all of this and having a common set of controls and requirements creates a consistent point of view. We can't guarantee that regulators will use this. They certainly don't endorse things. The best example is when they actually are trained and uh, providing input on it, which is beginning to happen in these early days of bringing this framework into the market. So first of all, I want to thank all the panelists before we go to your final key takeaways. Uh, it's unprecedented that all four companies and all the other firms involved all came together to help build this. It's been thousands of man hours over the last year and a half. And I think on behalf of the council on industry, we're just grateful that each of you and your firms decided to step up and work together on this. And we look forward to carrying this journey together as uh, CDMC involves in the marketplace. So thank you again to our panelists. So on to our final takeaways. Um, Mike, we're going to let you go first. We're going to flip the alphabetic order. Uh, any final thoughts for the audience before we move on to the next session? Yeah, I guess I would just end by saying and encouraging everyone to, you know, if you haven't already, download the CDMC. You know, get get involved with the community, start applying some of the controls, and uh, you know, and share your feedback. Uh, we're really excited to continue this collaboration, uh, and so eager to see all the ways it can use can be used and can empower uh, different data use cases. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Tony, over to you. I agree with um, my good friend over there in Microsoft. L look, at a framework helps with many things, but one of the key things it helps with is speed. It helps with costs, but speed is one of the big things you want with your data today. As we move, as we are in the digital age, it is incredibly important that the data can be changed quickly, can be 
protected understand common sense standards, this framework will provide that standard on, that will give you the flexibility and speed to use your data for all the different use cases you have today. Thank you, Tony. Mose. Absolutely. Well, I think first of all, my thanks to you, thanks to John and all the people at the ADMC for your partnership. It has been an incredible effort and really the, the collaborative nature of the working group was absolutely fantastic. It was an absolute pleasure to work uh, with such a large uh, number of organizations and the way this was uh, conducted it was absolutely impeccable and, and really a great example. And I think in terms of key takeaways, uh, absolutely, I encourage everybody to get stuck in, let us know what you think. Um, we believe that the CDMC provides the best practices uh, that really light the path to the cloud. So it can allow you to get there quicker, it can allow you to get there uh, safer. And I think, uh, yes, try to use it and let us know your feedback. Uh, and uh, it's been really great to work with you and everybody so far. Thank you, Mose. And uh, Jen, uh, if you would give us the uh, final word and then we'll move on with the conference. And again, thank you to our panelists for an outstanding discussion. Jen? Yeah, well, thank you. So I'm going to echo what, what Ali uh, started with by saying this is just the beginning. So yeah. it's launched, it's out there, um, lots more to come. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing how this gets into use. Awesome. Uh, thank you again to our panelists. Uh, I'm now going to let everyone know what's coming next for today. And thank you for joining us. Uh, so here, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And all right, so uh, for those, we now have a choice. You can do one of two of the next concurrent sessions, or you can move between them if you'd like to using the Socio platform. Option one is a, a panel discussion with Solidatus on cloud transformation, the Greenfield opportunity, but where do you start? And then another panel that's going on with OneTrust and Quantexa on sourcing trusted data to enable contextual decisioning for graph-based customer 360 insights. We'll see you over at that. Just follow the instructions on your agenda tab. You should be able to click right into these sessions uh, now. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next sessions.